evening, everyone. Can you hear me right at the back there? Yeah. Loud and clear? Great. Um, to be honest with you, if you ask me to dance, I can do it just like that. But if you ask me to talk, it takes me quite a, a while to get warm up. So I need to get warm up and I need you all to help me. Okay, so the easiest way, the, the, the best way I know how to get warm up is to do a little bit of movement. So I know you all are having your glasses in your hands. So if you all can put that down for a moment, for a few minutes, that would be great. So we're going to start off with a little bit of hand movements, okay? We're going to learn a little bit of gestures. We're going to bring the thumbs and the index finger and the middle finger to get together, okay? Because I do Indian classical dance, this is how we start our dance always. So we say a salutation to the dance. So I will do it, you don't have to do it. I will stamp my feet twice. You just pretend or you can do it on the floor if you can. So we do that one and two. So take a thumbs up over your shoulder. Take it round because I know you're sitting so close with your friends. Bring it down. If you can go down to the floor, touch the floor and touch the eye and we bow. So this is what we do every time before we start our Indian dance class. Okay, so that is to just to pay respect to the dance, to the dance form and to the teachers and all that. So this is how we open the dance. That's not enough to get me warm up, warmed up to speak. Anyway, so let's try a bit more. We'll start with our head working to our feet. So we look to the right, center, left, center, down, center, up, center, incline the head to the right, center, left, center. Bring your shoulders up and down, up and down. Rotate backwards and forwards. Great. If you can just wiggle your hips a little bit. That's it. One way. And the other way, cool. I know you can't do your knees, do your ankles a bit. Yes. And the other way, grand. The other one, good. Fantastic. I think I'm a bit warm now. OK, so I did prepare a whole PowerPoint presentation with my whole CV attached to it. And then I got told off yesterday. <laughs> Nobody wants to see a CV at a presentation. Just tell your life story. Just tell a story. Yes. So, I will let it go. I'm not going to refer to it. If you all want to see it, you all can see it. But I'll tell you how my journey began in dance. Okay? It started very late. So this is me opening my heart to you all and saying, Sorry if I mess up my words, so fumble while talking. <laughs> and here goes. So I started dance at the age of 18. Not quite the young four-year-old. Usually the Indian dancers say, I started dance when I was very young at the age of four. No, I'm not going to say that. I started dance at the mature age of, age of 18. And thanks to my father, yes, I was so pissed off with him because he didn't allow me to dance for so many years. So yeah, call me the Billy Elliot of Malaysia, <laughs> which is where I'm from. So yes, so I, I wanted to dance so badly. And at the age of 18, I told him, okay, this is what I'm going to do, whether you like it or not, and I'm going to dance. He got so furious with me. He said, you don't even have facial hair on your face and you got the guts to tell me you're going to do what you want to do. So we had a big argument. And, we, and I just, of course, I was a rebel and I went and did it anyway. Okay? Although I didn't have facial hair, but I had hair everywhere else. I'm not talking about the head. <laughs> so that's when it started at the age of 18. So I went to a dance school, one of the biggest dance schools in Malaysia, called the Temple of Fine Arts. It is the temple because there the, it's, it's very religious. Can you hear me over the music, or do I need to reduce the music a little bit? Okay. 
Let's see how to do this. <laughs> So at the Temple of Fine Arts, we do many different classical Indian dance styles. So the first classical Indian dance style I was trained in is called Bharatanatyam, and it is from the southern part of India, from a place called Tamil Nadu. And in this dance style, because of the re rethinking of Indian classical dance form from the original form, which is quite sensual and sensuous and, and almost provocative, it has been rethought of and redesigned to take off all the sensualities and to make it pure technical form by a great dancer, Rukmini Arundel, who, who created Bhardhanatyam and she, she took off all the sensuality about it and she formed Bhardhanatyam, so that's what we learned the rigidity, the straight lines, the linear forms. So we have got straight lines here, and the basic feet position is that, and we sit in a demi-plie position. So we have, we, everything we do with our body is very linear. And we use a lot of hand gestures, and we tell a lot of stories with them. So what we learned just now, was that was the first one. And then we've got a different one. We can all try that. So from here, with your little finger, rotate it inwards. So we've got the second one, okay? So, so this one, we can use it to just show a beautiful hand gesture. Or we can show it with different meanings, showing the flower, the full moon, the whole body. Yes. So like this, we've got different styles, we've got different hand gestures. We can show the deer, we can show the tree, we can show the elephant. And all the different animals and, and things. So we tell a lot of story using the Hindu mythologies and depicting the gods and the goddesses. So we'll tell all the story just by dance, with hand gestures, facial expressions, and movements. So that was my first style. And the second classical Indian dance style, when I say classical Indian dance style, it's like the classical ballet, okay? So because India is such a big, vast country, we have got eight different classical Indian dance styles. So the second one I learned was from the northeast of India, from Orissa, a place called Orissa, and it's called Odissi. Odissi, we maintain the sensuality of the body, the fluidity of the body. So the basic stance is the tribangi, where you can see the three bends of the body, front, two, and three. So we shift the ribs, and we, well, while we're dancing. So it's a bit more fluid than the Bhardhanatyam, which is quite rigid. Okay, we also have a strong masculine position, which is the Chauka. So these are the basic stands for this classical Indian dance style. And in the same dance school, I've, I trained in Kathak as well. Kathak is from the north of India, and it's very straight. We play a lot of with, with rhythms with our feet. So. So, the feet is doing something else, the hand is doing something else, the face is doing something else. So all this, that's why I'm playing the music, so you can listen to the music, you can listen to me talk at the same time, you can watch the presentation. So we do many things at the same time. So this is how what we do in dance as well. So that's Kathak. 
So finishing that, I finished seven years training in Malaysia and I did my graduation in Bharatanatyam, which is the final, after minimum of five years training, you do a graduation in your English, Indian classical dance style. So I did that and my uncle was there. He, lives, he lived in the UK and he was so impressed, he offered to sponsor my education over here. So I took the first flight out of Malaysia. Thank God for that. So came here in 1998, March 1998, and I started my, uh, first I did my higher national diploma in performing arts at the University of Hertfordshire, North Hearts College, and where I did two years. In my first year, I saw this audition leaflet in my college and I went. It was an Asian dance organization who was looking for dancers. So I went for the, for the audition and the organization was Kadam Asian Dance and the director is sitting right in front of me, Sanjeevani Datta. So she was audition auditioning for a performance called The Auction of Ruby Slippers. Who can tell me who's, who's, who's written that book? Yes! So Salman Rushdie's famous book, The Auction of the Rupee Slippers. I didn't get to wear the red shoes, but it was there. I wish I had the chance to wear the red shoes. But hey, so that started my career in dance in the UK. So we went on a tour with Kadam. We went to the eastern region mainly. And on one of the legs in Bedford, we met uh, Vishaka Sarkar, who is the director of Chaturangan from the company in Liverpool. And that's where my journey to Liverpool started. So from then, we kept in contact and she gave me my first commission to create, to choreograph my own piece, full length work called Mandala. And it was performed in Manchester, the Green Room. In 2001, correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, I think it's 2001. I shared the platform with Akram Khan. My, fa my claim to fame. So this is it. This is part of my CV, you can read it. I'm not going to talk about it. This is all what I've done in Liverpool and more because I couldn't fit. There was not enough space to put it in one slide. So that's what we do. And more, and more of this, these are workshops, performances. One is called The Boundless Sky and the other one is called Anga Chetna, all in Liverpool. Many, many years ago when I had hair. Now, I wonder how I lost them. So from here, so one performance which stands out, or a few, the main thing, we did was the, the, the sacred move is a performance we did in Liverpool cathedrals, in both of the main cathedrals, the Metropolitan Cathedral and the Anglican Cathedral. And we did it in the well, the well of the cathedral, in the Anglican Cathedral, and in the crypt in the Metropolitan Cathedral. Can you imagine Indian dance in the cathedral? So that was a sign that Liverpool is so welcoming to different cultures which is amazing to have an Indian dance performance in the cathedral. And, and then we moved on to do the Spirit of Liverpool, uh, which is celebrating the capital of culture, Liverpool capital of culture, yes. And we just had a sharing at the Planetarium for Unseen Designs, which is another video installation at the Planetarium Dome on combining arts and science. And it was all through Chaturangan. And of course, I've been involved with Mercy Science Dance Initiative as well. And this, I put this photo in because this is one of my interests to work with between ages. So, 
you get uh, an elderly dancer performing alongside the young dancer. So we're through, throughout the work with Chaturangan, we go into care homes to work and to perform for the elderly. So that, that really is a lot. It's, for me, it's a lot more meaningful to perform for special needs and, and the elderly rather than just having a... It's nice to have a stage performance once in a while, but that really moves me when I do performances for... take performances out of the stage into the public. So that's Liverpool in a nutshell. And then we've got Luton. Luton is where the other dance company, which I started working with, Kadam, is based. And we've done money projects in Luton. So got a bit of time. So you can read that in your own time. And um, so the company, um, I still do a lot of work with the company, with the car, with a, with a with a group of us called the Odyssey Ensemble, and this is based in the Indian classical styles of Odyssey. So we do a lot of tour with them still. And if you see in 2016, the Rose and Bulbul, that we took on a tour to all the gardens in different museums. So still bringing out the dance form outside the theater. And of course, Art of Travel, based on another book by Alan de Borton. Yes. And that's me in 2004. And at this point, I would like to introduce a photographer who's seen me grow in these 20 years, Simon Richardson. Is he here? He, look, he makes me look better than I usually do. <laughs> and then we move to London. So yes, so transcending regions, this is. So from the northwest to the east to London to West Midlands. So when I, when I, was, in, when I was working in London, which is in and out, as sometimes do as well. I had an Arts Council Choreographic Development Award, and from that award, I, I researched and developed using Indian dance to cross with cabaret, cross-dressing, and burlesque. That's me without my beard, <laughs> on a good night. <laughs> so, yes, so transcending gender. What can I say? It started with training in Toronto. Uh, we, we went to work with a choreographer called Hari Krishnan, who is based in Toronto with Indance, he's the director of Indance. And he trained me in the Indian classical form of Bharatanatyam in cross-dressing. And we have a term for that, it's called Sri Vesham. Sri Vesham is the feminine, feminine side. It literally means the feminine, feminine side, yes. So that's, that's the dance. And in this dance, he choreographed fully in Bharatanatyam style, which you saw the first style which I demonstrated. And, um, and he brought out the bitch in me, <laughs> the lover, the good wife, and the goddess. 
So interestingly, he brought all the three fairs, all the three different embodiment of feminine power, energy, and it was hardcore training. He made me wear a sari for every rehearsal. If you don't know what a sari is, a sari is a long fabric about seven yards, and you drape it around you. And, and this is a lot of Indian ladies, they, they tie that, they wear that every day, like what Bishaka is wearing today. Yeah, that's the sari. So you can see how is that. So I had to wear that for my rehearsals every day. <coughs> And so from then, we went on developing pieces which incorporated art, music, and cross-dressing as well. So this is a painting from an artist called Brian Dennis, who is based in London. And this is a piece called She, He, Dom. So the he is within the she. So who's more domineering? So this is, I'm an extreme feminist, by the way, as you can see. So again, Simon has taken a great shot there of me in action, in a skirt. And the performance was, the music was by a lesbian band from Manchester called Aja UK. I should have written that there, but I forgot. So this, so whenever I create work, it's, based on the theme, but I try to find different artistic influence to create this. So that was with art and live band on stage. And this is another photo from Simon. I could be a portrait of me. It, it looks like an art piece, that's why I put it there. And this is another one. In, I've, I've worked in, in Spain, in Madrid, teaching them Indian classical dance. They all spoke in Spanish, not a word of English. But we got through, only through hand gestures, mime, dance. And this is in Paris. I'm showing you these photos because I guess it's of the artistic qualities of the design aspect of the lighting design of the costume of the makeup and different things so bringing all that in so it's just not the dance technique you need to know you need to know the lighting you need to know the makeup you need to know the costume when you become a dancer choreographer and this is a performance in 2017 in Malacca it is in the ruins of a, of a of a church by the Portuguese invasion many, many years ago. And it was open air, and I think it rained as well. And this was in the church. You can see the ruins of the church at the back, and I was dancing on the water. And this is a piece I did a few years ago. As you can see, it's called Vibrations. I want to do an experiment with all of you all now, which is what I do when I, before I start doing this piece, when I perform this piece before, which is to just feel the connectedness from within. Just take a few deep breaths, breathe in. If you're, you can close your eyes if you want to and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. With the next inhalation, I want you to try and move your hands in any way you want. Be, be mindful of the person sitting beside you. So you can move it forward, stretch it up, stretch it down. Just keeping the breath, breathing in and breathing out, listening to the music. Let the in music influence you. Let your breath 
influence you. Feel the connection with your hands, through your body, through your head, through your entire body, through your feet. Just listening to the music and feeling the vibration from within. I just want you to go with the flow and see what you can do with your body. Keep the breath going. You can let the music influence you. The basic element of every being, of everything, is particles and the particles and the, the little things within us is the vibrations are all the same. So we, we vibrate in different speed, so that's why we are different and we've got different things because the vibration is different. So the whole piece was based on those vibration, bringing to a conclusion that we are of the same vibration. We are all essentially vibrations. So when you hear the term, I see God in you, meaning the divinity is all around, the divinity is within us. So that's why I'm not religious, but I believe in everyone and the here and the now. So this piece was all to do with the vibrations of the vibrations from inside, the vibrations from outside, the vibrations around us, the vibrations all over. And with that, we finish. <laughs> That's it. I will stop the music now. So the second part of today's lecture is on a theme which I've been working on lately, on grief. This started, the music you heard just now was Debussy, and that was the inspiration for me, the, the starting point of this project, of to research on this project. So, um, Last year, uh, no, I think it was in January uh, last year, yes, I was in Amsterdam and this flautist just played a tune on the flute and I was improvising to it. I, I didn't know Debussy before that at all. And my body just moved to the music. He played uh, Cladelune, which was the third track in the, in the loop just now. And I, uh, my body resonated so much to the music that it was, it almost lent itself to Indian dance, which I felt strongly about. So, so I took it uh, to different community settings in, through the help uh, with Kadam um, in, in the Eastern region and developed pieces using the music you heard just now with three different community groups and it was it was brilliant to work with different styles 
different dance styles and from the Eastern dance style forms and the Western classical music. So that kind of got me thinking a lot more about working using a combination of Western and Eastern styles. So, so that was the starting point of that. And while doing further research on that, my father passed away. And so, so with, that, with that grief in me, I was still doing the research and I happened to come across a poem by Baudelaire on grief, Flor de la Flor de Mall. It's, it's, it's later, you can see, it will be on the, on the projection later. Um, and uh, using that poem, Debussy created a music to f using that poem. So with that music, I worked with amazing violinists from London and Luton and, uh, and, an, and a percussionist, Indian percussionist, to create the soundtrack for the piece, which you'll hear later on. So coming back to the topic of grief and bereavement, I've just got this because I had to go for a bereavement awareness uh, uh, course as part of the development process of this R&D. And uh, it affects us in all these ways. And you don't know how, to what extent it might affect you in these ways. It could be minimal, it could be uh, extreme, so it affects in different ways. And these are the stages of grief. You get the initial shock and, and all that. I'm not going to read it out because you all can read it. And then we've got the mourning process. So, it's a Tonkin manual which, is, which shows this is, if this is the grief which, is the, which you are experiencing, this is the size of the grief. It doesn't reduce, it stays the same size. But what happens around you increases. So when you accept and learn to cope, so that experiences gets bigger, but the grief stays the same. It doesn't reduce, so you, it's, it's always there. It's not, it's, so the whole idea for this research and development is not to create an embodiment of grief to reduce the, re, the intent, the, the grief. It's just to help cope with the grief. So that was the idea. So I worked with a psychotherapist, and we've come out with a whole workshop plan introducing movements to embody grief. So that, that is another work. Can you all hear me? Yeah. So, uh, so that, that is the workshop process which I have been working on with the psychotherapist. And today, what you'll see here today is the performance aspect of it, which I've created with Debussy's music and Baudelaire's poem. This is the poem which I've used in the piece. which I will be reciting during the piece as well. And it develops and interspersed with my own experience of grief, with my own text, um, which you all will hear a 
everything. And this is a painting which inspired me on the grief. I know it doesn't say grief as such, but Munch, Edward Munch, created a painting similar to this using a girl looking outwards. And that was, I think it was to do with grief. So this is like kind of, it, resonate, it resonated within me on my longing, my urge, my the separation, the withdrawal. This is the intention of the workshop, of the performance. So I will present to you the love hand, and if you can help me with the music, Rosa. I wasn't even there. A gloomy atmosphere envelops the city, bringing peace to some and anxiety to others. While the vulgar herds of mortals under the scourge of pleasure, that merciless torturer
dare you? How dare you not allow me to do what I love? All I wanted to do was to dance. How dare you not teach me the basics of living? I'm exactly like you. You are burning on the outside. I'm burning inside. My grief, come this way, away from them. Give me your hand. See the dead years in old-fashioned girl. In my childhood years, that lovely man used to wait with me after my classes. Not a hint that he had to be at work in his vintage Mercedes-Benz. Three hours we waited for the bus to come with my sisters from the neighboring girls' school, just so that I could experience a ride on the school bus. Ah, the joy!
Lean over the balconies of heaven. Smiling regrets rise from the waters. A year before my father passed on, that was the first time we had a conversation. He opened up his heart to me with tears in his eyes. For the first time, I was proud to be his son. I wished I had come out to him. Let's get forward. Credits to all of them. I think some of y'all are here. So that is what I've come so far in the research and development. And this is a presentation. Um, not a happy one, I'm afraid, sorry. But something which hopefully comes. Thank you. Thank you so Thank very, you. very much. I think we're going to have a q and session. Do you yeah. have any questions? Yeah, so she's going to take the interview and That's the questions. Wonderful. Thank you, thank you so much. This is Sarah Alden, by the way. She's an international journalism student. Would you like to join us?
so thank you again for doing the talk. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and thank you for letting me to take up a bit of your time to ask a few questions. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Um, so, for this piece, you wanted to focus more on the theme of grief. Yes. Um, why is that? You explained it to your father, but is yeah. that? The, um, the original inspiration was the music of Debussy. So I don't think, if, uh, I don't think you probably wouldn't have recognized even the, when the, with the soundtrack it was Debussy at all, because uh, it is in the veins of Debussy's musical structure, but added with different things. So that's the starting point. And then when I discovered this poem from the Baudelaire, and it just worked so well. And, I, and that, that was the feeling I was feeling at the moment. So I needed to express that. And, and I think uh, if you can create a music or create an art piece with your grief, I think you'll create, I, for me, I think that's the best outlet anyone can have for grief. And what does dance as a whole mean to you? Uh, dance has become my life, as, uh, so to speak. Um, it means a lot of training, a lot of hard work. I want to say poverty, but yes, <laughs> as well. <laughs> but um, it's because it transformed me. And in that few moments when I was performing, I was, I was somewhere else. And I was in this special place which I think I only go to when I'm dancing. Yeah, I can't describe it. What do you want people, the audience, to feel when they watch you dance? I want, to, I want them to feel the joy I'm feeling. Don't feel the grief. <laughs> Just feel my joy. That would be great. Yeah. And do you think there's um, a real difference between being a choreographer and being a dancer? Uh, there is definitely a huge difference because I try to do that twice. I, I try to do both at the same time, and it's very difficult. It's not easy to be a, the choreographer of and you dance in your own piece because you are the biggest critic of your own self. And every time when you dance with others, you're looking at yourself. And yeah, I think that's, uh, that's not conducive, <laughs> but sometimes we have to do it for budget reasons. <laughs> So we have to just take on the challenge and do it. It's not easy, yeah. What do you think is the most, in, most important part about being a dancer? The most important part is endurance. You have to keep going uh, because if, if you end the love for dance, if you have this too in you, then, then you, can, you can strive and make it. Uh, but, so that's the most important thing you need to endure, you need to struggle, you need to work hard at it. Same like everything else. Yeah. And what inspired you to, this, to do this style of dance? Uh, this, uh, it, it's, it's many different styles. I don't restrict myself to one style. At the moment when I started training in Indian classical dance is because my sisters were training in Indian classical dance at that time in Malaysia and I was so in love with the style. I would go to all their performances be with their re in their rehearsals and their classes, but I was not allowed to do it at that time, so, yeah. You said before that you've lived in Liverpool for a few years. Yeah. Have you noticed any in like incredible talent in the dance industry? I've actually uh, not lived in Liverpool. I have been working in Liverpool and coming very often to Liverpool uh, and doing a lot of work here since 2000. And I get, got my first commission from Chaturangan. I'm showing Ch uh, there because Bishaka Shakar is the director of Chaturangan. And she's like my mom. So, so Liverpool is like a home away from home for me. So it's been since 2000, since, uh, so we, we, I've been working a lot here. And, and now I've moved here since December. Yeah, sorry, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> Have you? found any new talent in the dance industry for Oh my god the talent is immense these days yeah so uh, yeah huge talent yeah And what do you think about Liverpool's art and culture 
it's thriving, it's, it's, it's big enough that it's not as big as London and the competition in London is so great. Here is big, but I think there's a lot of things to do for everyone. So I'm, I'm getting a lot more work here than I was in London, so it's great. <laughs> yeah. And um, lastly, what can we expect from you in 2019? In 2019, just as always, I'll keep going, doing what I do most, um, what I do, what I love. And um, yeah, you'll see me in many more care homes and special needs schools and different schools and different environment of dance rather than a stage. I would do stage performances as well. But yeah, a lot more to come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very, very much, <laughs> Sarah. You. Sarah Almond from your dream. <laughs> and Carly. Thank I don't know if anybody else would like to ask any questions. Any? Um, I just wondered about the performance that you did, the one that you just showed us. Yeah. Um, like, how much of that was your own choreography, and how much is, is there any of that like directly relating to the classical Indian dance? Yes, I worked with a choreographer. Uh, who is actually originally from India, but now she's based in the US. Her name is Janaki Rangarajan, and she brought in the classical elements in this choreography. And I worked with my mentor, who brought in the creative elements, which is Bishaka Saka. So com combining a lot of that, um, and I did, um, I, I had my own input as well in that, yeah. And, yeah. I think, I think you need to have a balance because technique is very important if you're practicing a dance style. But uh, I like to bring out the best in every dancer I work with. So I, I, like to I like to find their personality in dance. So, and the best way to do that is to ask them to improvise. So you need to have the both to have a good balance. So uh, training is so important as equal as letting your self-expression come out, I think. Yeah. I'm just going to put something on the screen because I didn't have time to create forms for you all to fill up. So if you all can send me an email, it would be great. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't think of because um, we don't normally do this at the university, but if any of you have any comments or whatever, please email me. I think you all know my email address. It's on the JMU website, Jagjit Chuha. Um, and I'll forward them on to Carly. That'd be that great. would be fantastic. Um, um, perhaps if I could just keep you here for a few minutes longer. Um, I was just really intrigued how you mix, um, you know, different art forms, poetry, music, dance, and from different cultures. I always think that there's different cultures in the world, and yet we're all human beings. We're yeah. the same animal everywhere. So I, I just love the way that you naturally fuse them together in this yeah. beautiful kind of arrangement. Thank you. So, um, so, and it was intriguing, you said you heard Debussy for the first time, you said, yes. and your body just, just moved. moved. Yeah. yeah, that was, that was wonderful. So it's not and you had, you had a connection with Debussy as well. I, I just love, I mean, um, partly to mask this sound of traffic in my studio, because I work in the front. Okay. It's not too busy, but it is quite a busy road. But partly it just creates a space. And I sort of listen to the same thing again and again. 
and again and so many mm. times and DPC is one of my nice. favorites yeah. so it's wonderful um, yeah so, so sorry that wasn't really a question but I, I just think that's thank wonderful you. Thank, thank you thank you thank you so thank much you. anything from the top of your head would you like to say about the piece Help me what? Uh, with your own reading process. Oh, um, it, it allowed me to express how I'm feeling, which is, amaz uh, uh, which is amazing, because we always don't talk about grief, because in the Hindu culture, it's like you're not supposed to grieve, because the death and rebirth is, is inevitable. So that's in the Bhagavad Gita. So, um, so we don't really express it. So this is like an outlet which was kind of relieving. And yeah, I think I found my peace with my father. Do you think it could translate to other people? Yeah. Yes, there's a workshop linked to this, which I will be working on even more with my psychotherapist to create that whole some thing, yeah. So it's not there yet, so that's why I didn't quite do it with you all today. So, mm. it's, a, it's a very fragile topic, grief, to understand and to feel compassionate about people who are just going through a bereavement. And yeah, so I need to be very careful with the words I use. Oh, uh, with anything really, because this is only one, one part of our journey and one part of our emotions. I think it would stand with any, sh any performance. And I, I hope there won't be another piece on grief as well, which would be too much for an evening performance. So yeah, I think it can stand with anything. Definitely, influence. yes. So like how does it like influence it? Does it um, do like large spaces make it intimidating or what do you, what do you think? Uh, uh, just if I'm, if I'm just, initially it is intimidating for a large space, but it's just to find the connection, to find the, to breathe in the space, to be able to breathe in the space, that's so important for me, and to find the movement and there's so much movement which we can't see in a space. And to, to kind of sense that, I think is important for me. Yeah, so different places has got different kinds of movement. Yeah. Okay, well, um, thank you all so very, very much. Um, for being here. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having the me. The most. No, it's <laughs> been absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for coming.